Welcome back again to our channel. This is Captain Sherry, and today we are going to discuss about a very important topic: dry dock. I will be discussing about the upthrust force also, and what is the significance of the upthrust force as far as calculations of stability are concerned. Now, the first question arises: Why do we need a dry dock? And if I say that it is written in SOLAS regulations that there has to be a ship bottom inspection. and these ship bottom inspection should be actually done two times okay so for a cargo ship there shall be a minimum of two ship bottom inspection over a period of 5 years at a interval not exceeding 36 months now out of this ship bottom inspection one can be replaced by in water survey for a cargo ship right okay now so we need a dry dock because sola says that we need to have a ship bottom inspection and these ship bottom inspection shall be minimum two ship bottom inspection over a period of time at an interval not exceeding 36 months however one can be replaced by in water survey but the other has to be done by a done at a dry dock itself why we need these inspections or ship bottom inspection because we want to inspect the bottom if there is any repair or maintenance which is required of underwater portion we can only see that once the ship bottom is out and that is why dry dock is important now there is another question why do we need to repair or inspect the underwater portion of a ship what is the need right now you know that over a period of time a ship will have a marine growth right and this marine growth growth irrespective of whatever anti fouling system you have say for example you have iccp or say you have the anti fouling uh, uh paint and coating or what not but this marine growth which will uh, be happening on the underwater portion of a ship it will affect the speed of a ship and if you are doing less speed and you are obviously doing more fuel consumption more fuel consumption and that is why a dry dock is very very important understood or not so if we have to repair any anti fouling system you know the regulation if it is 25% or more uh, uh damaged then we need to replace our anti fouling uh, systems also uh, we are not going into too much detail i'll cover it in some other video and then of course if we require a maintenance of a rudder or a propeller polishing or see other things that can only happen in a dry dock right so that is the first thing now when we go inside a dry dock why it becomes so critical operation at that time that is the second thing why it is so critical to enter a dry dock what is the reason now if you see imagine that this ship is inside the locks the gates are closed and she is about to sit on the blocks okay now what happens in a normal stability all of us know now that the force of gravity is equal to force of buoyancy and that is how the ship floats freely in the water right now that is our concept of flotation okay of a ship that force of gravity is equal to force of buoyancy the ship is going to float right now in the dry dock when the gates are locked what we start doing it is we will start pumping out water 
pumping out of water will start. Say, for example, you had a water here. Okay. And the blocks are also lined to the center line of a ship. And now this water, this water will start pumping out. What will happen now? Once the water will reduce, say for example, once the water is getting reduced, okay, and we are getting closer, okay, so the water is getting reduced and we are starting sitting on the blocks, okay, because of this pumping out operation, what is going to happen is there will be a force which will be acting, okay, and this force is known as upthrust force, right? Upthrust force. Okay, and this upthrust force, what it is going to do is, this upthrust force is equal to the loss of buoyancy inside a dock. Whatever buoyancy has been lost, so if I say that the upthrust is equal to the loss of buoyancy, there is nothing wrong. Okay, now, you must be wondering why I have said this. Why I have said this, that upthrust is equal to the loss of buoyancy. Okay, just imagine that there is a bucket. Just imagine you have a bucket at your house. Okay, and this bucket is full of water. Okay, this is water inside the bucket. Let's draw it in the other color so that you understand. Okay, this is like water. Have you noticed if you are, say, for example, trying to, you know, put a tumbler. If you try to put a tumbler like this in this water, okay, when you put it inside and when you try to pull it up, okay, once you're dropping it inside, Okay, and then you're trying to pull this tumbler up. What is happening is there is a force, okay, which you feel on your hand or palm. Everybody must have actually felt that. And that is what is also kind of an upthrust force. Okay, understood or not? Okay, so that is what is happening there. So upthrust force is equal to the loss of buoyancy. Understood or not? And if you just want to know what is the upthrust force, just go take a bucket, make it full of water, okay, take a tumbler in your hand, dip it into the water and start extracting the water from the bucket. You'll feel some force on your hand and that force is actually known as upthrust. Okay, right? Now, look at this now. Now the vessel is on the block. Now the vessel is sitting on the block. It is sitting on the block. Okay. And you see there is a gap between uh, the other blocks and the ship bottom. Right. So there is a gap over here. There is a gap over here. Okay. It is still not touched. But the stern has already touched uh, the blocks. Okay. Now what is going to happen now? Okay. So you see this now the block will exert a force and this force will be in the upward direction and this is known as p force this force is known as p force over here okay right now the block is exerting a force known as p force we go further ahead okay so you remember, I had already told you that the center of gravity is acting down. Okay, so this is your center of gravity. So, for example, this is your center of gravity. Okay. So, this is your center of gravity. And this is your buoyancy. Okay. And they are acting nicely. Okay. But when the ship sits at this block, okay, there will be an upthrust force also. So there will be the upthrust force and this force will be acting in this direction. Right? And now I will call it as the upthrust force.
now once the upthrust force is going on top okay i told you in the previous slide we had discussed that the upthrust force will be equal to how much force you are losing on your buoyancy okay right okay so now what is going to happen see this okay now the buoyancy which was there on top top it has shifted down if you see this okay if you see this this buoyancy was acting here upward in the upward direction and this buoyancy which was here okay it got shifted to over here okay so there is definitely a loss of buoyancy understood or not okay so what i just said i told you that the buoyancy was somewhere here right it was somewhere here and now this buoyancy has come to this point okay there is a loss of buoyancy okay and this buoyancy loss is equal to the upthrust force which is over here right which is over here so this is your upthrust force so once this upthrust force will start acting upward the same amount of buoyancy will be lost okay and that buoyancy okay force will come will start decreasing okay understood or not okay and that is what has happened over here now everybody knows this diagram that a ship has to be in a positive or stable equilibrium we all are trying to put a ship into a stable equilibrium all the time stable and why ship is stable in this diagram because gm is positive as simple as that gm is positive right we have we have gm which is a metacentric height it is positive okay once the vessel heels to the other side okay there is a shift in a buoyancy again it cuts uh, your line uh, you know from the keel uh, to uh, a place which is known as meta center and you know around the meta center it stabilizes uh, uh, if it is healing then it is transfer static stability which i am talking about over here understood or not so when you are entering the dry dock also you need to keep the gm positive you need to keep uh, you know stable equilibrium so that you don't lose the stability because of virtual loss of gm right because of this upthrust force okay so now look at this now the ship has come on the keel okay so this is your keel and uh, so this is your keel right so this is your keel over here upthrust force is acting like this upward direction okay and buoyancy is also acting okay right now there is a problem when the upthrust force is getting exerted okay from the keel okay right it is not going to change it is going to change of course the value will change but the upthrust force okay from where it is acting it will act from there only which is keel okay keel touching the blocks so it will get exerted from the blocks and it will start acting upward right okay on the other hand the buoyancy will shift there will be a decrease in the buoyancy okay so now what will happen is now because of this moment what it is going to do is it is going to create a capsizing moment okay look at this right it is going to create a capsizing moment now and this capsizing moment will get created okay and that is why you know we say you know the critical instant and critical period in a dry dock is very very important because any time the ship can capsize if you have not done your stability calculations uh, perfectly and chief officer is not aware of maintaining a positive stability throughout the dry dock understood or not so capsizing moment will be formed understood or not right okay because you know you know this is the upthrust force which is acting upward okay right and this is the weight of a ship which is acting downward okay understood or not okay 
so the g is there okay and then you've got uh, you know if there is there is a shift in the buoyancy you've got m also okay on top okay but but if the buoyancy will shift okay and if there is a loss of buoyancy loss of buoyancy will decrease the km okay so your meta center will change if your meta center changes then your m will uh, come down and if your m comes down okay there is a virtual loss of a gm which is dangerous for a ship okay so just remember that it will create a capsizing moment and then later the stages i will uh, try to uh, solve uh, in front of you by taking a ship's figure how there is a virtual loss of gm so don't worry about this diagram much okay just remember that there is a virtual loss of gm and uh, if there is a negative stability which might develop okay it might uh, also uh, give rise to a capsizing moment okay now as i told you as the ship will start settling on the dock okay so first the stern will touch we know that right first in every dry dock the stern will touch okay the stern is the one which will touch first right and then all the other portions of the a uh, ship bottom will be sitting on the keel so what will happen is the up thrust fo force will keep increasing this up thrust force will keep increasing okay right now why we are maintaining a trim in the dry dock we are maintaining a adequate trim in the dry dock okay again a chief officer has to discuss this uh, with the docking master so there will be meeting between the chief officer and the docking master okay and they'll be discussing the stability uh, parameters of entering into a dock okay so why they tell you to maintain a trim because if we are having a parallel approach and when the ship is coming uh, you know parallel uh, to uh, the blocks what will happen is uh, you know all the blocks uh, it will touch at the same time and then there might be a maximum Uh, up thrust force which will be there and it will capsize the vessel then and there only that is why what we do is we try to first uh, get the stern on the blocks okay and then uh, slowly slowly once the water is getting pumped out uh, you know the bow uh, will also eventually sit on the blocks okay understood or not so stern will sit the bow will float okay so bow will float here and there until it sits and ultimately the bow will also sit now the period of say uh, your what do you call a stern touching and the bow touching is also known as a critical period okay so what is a critical period so once your stern has touched this block okay and once your bow touches the block or takes the block and once uh, Uh, that is done that is known as critical period okay now okay now once it settles down on the block okay fully then the up thrust force will be acting upward from the blocks and it will be equal okay so it will be acting equally from all the ends okay now the weight of the ship has come on the blocks there is no problem okay but if we would have gone bodily you know sinking the ship take a parallel approach to the blocks what would have happened the up thrust force will be more right and then in that case you know we can have capsizing moments at different uh, you know part of the ship and then ship can capsize okay so the better approach is having the trim getting the stern sitting on the blocks okay maintaining a positive gm at the same time and then let the ship float freely for some time and then settling the ship more or less when the water is getting pumped out on the blocks once it is on the block the up thrust force will be acting upward okay equally right and the full weight will be on the blocks so now the ship has 
फुल वेट ऑन ब्लॉक्स दे इज नो प्रॉब्लम ओके नाउ सो दिस वॉज अ काइंड ऑफ अ थ्रियोटिकल पार्ट नाउ वॉट हैपन्स इन अ ड्राई डॉक इज यू हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ लॉक लॉकिंग अरेन्जमेंट सो दिस इज लाइक लॉक्ड ओके फ्रॉम हेयर इट हेज गॉट गेट सो आई एम डिवाइडिंग इट इन टू टू पार्ट ओके सो लेट सी आई कैन डिवाइड दैट ओके सो देर आर टू गेट्स विच आर ओके वी कैन नेम दैम गेट वन एंड गेट टू ओके बोथ आर लॉक्ड नाउ वॉट हैपन्स हेयर इन साइड इज बेसिकली uh you know there will be the blocks which i just showed you right there will be the blocks which will be down so you know the ship has to, to get lined up okay so for example the blocks are lying on this line okay so it is lying on this line okay so what they need to do is they need to line up a ship with this line okay now the divers will be arranged basically so of course uh, i'm not going into too much detail the divers diver team or whoever is supervisor uh, will come on board have a meeting with the chief officer and once a meeting is done he will tell a chief officer that this is the diving checklist and uh, you know what signal has to be there and what machinery has to be shut down what they need exactly they will give you a checklist okay and then of course the lights and the shapes and all that or the flags which you need to put in uh, on the ship okay so that has to be put in as per the local regulations and then the divers will be telling you okay that whether a ship has got aligned to the blocks or not okay and then only the pumping pumping out of water will start understood or not so there will be two divers mainly okay one will be at the forward end one will be at the after end and he will be actually telling the persons who will also come for stations on your ship so basically they'll be telling you okay ship has to move a little inside or outside or how it has to move uh, you know to get itself aligned to the blocks understood or not okay now okay so now say for example you've come inside a block okay and uh, you are about to ship uh, take the blocks okay so i have just uh, made gate 1 and gate 2 and this is a dock so consider uh, uh, you know that we are inside on the dock like that and we are aligned uh, to uh, the center line okay so ship is lined up with the center line vertically over the keel block and that is what i have written over here okay so you need to align it first okay right now remember i told you again force of gravity is equal to force of buoyancy okay when a ship is in a floating condition okay and once we will start pumping out the water okay then uh, we will be having a problem okay now look at this ship okay so we have got a ship mv dd dry dock and this mv dry dock is basically sitting is about to sit on the blocks take the blocks we have started pumping out the water as well okay now there are pumps inside the dock so pumping out uh, starts and it is all done by a docking supervisor or a dock master okay when a pumping out of water has to take place there might also happen that you are going you are the only vessel who are going and taking uh, uh, the the block and uh, there is only one ship which will come in the in the dock and there might also be a possibility where four or more ships are entering the dock okay so it all depends if you are a single ship then they'll start otherwise they'll wait for the other ship also right there will be mooring gang also on board of your ship uh, which will be helping uh, you out okay uh, to send the moorings ashore so that with the moorings also you will be lining the ship so divers remember will be telling you how to line up a ship with the blocks and this will be done by the mooring by pulling or you know wearing or rendering the rope or whatever it is okay so before entering a dock chief officer has to maintain a stable equilibrium reduce your free surface effect 
adequate trim i told you why adequate trim okay why we are not bodily sinking the ship onto the blocks okay and now you have made a base so maintaining a stable equilibrium free surface uh correction okay has to be done and uh, please avoid uh, you know slack tanks okay and please avoid part partly filled tanks okay uh, instead of that fill up uh, tanks uh, if you are taking any ballast to maintain that trim or whatever it is so free surface effect please reduce it to the bare minimum okay right now let's go further ahead now you see this again that is the same vessel and it has taken the block so obviously the water uh, uh, you know uh, it is it is sitting on the blocks and we are still pumping out the water okay and uh, you know vessel has uh, touched the the block okay now what will happen is this block is going to actually right this block is going to actually create a force which is known as upthrust force which we also known as a p force okay right understood or not now you know that center of flotation is what okay center of flotation is the center geometric center of a water plane area and it is uh, such uh, uh, a point it has no effect on the of the transfer inclination or longitudinal inclination that is what is center of flotation right okay now center of flotation is at a distance of say la uh, from uh, the aft where it is sitting the sitting at the uh, what you call sitting at the block now if i say that the weight of a ship will be equal to buoyancy force plus p force it will not be wrong right remember the example of uh you know a tumbler inside a bucket okay right i told you that if you put in some weight okay say for example if there is a bucket like this and if you put in a weight of 15 tons inside a bucket so before putting inside a bucket the weight will be 15 tons once it goes inside okay once it goes inside what is going to happen is it is going to lose and become 10 tons so where this 5 tons and gone this 5 ton is basically your upthrust force okay upthrust force so if i say that this w okay is equal to buoyancy force which is decreasing i told you why it is decreasing because as the magnitude of upthrust force increases the buoyancy decreases is equal to uh plus your upthrust force which is increasing okay so that is what uh is uh there what you gain from this diagram right now now look at this now and imagine your ship is you know sitting at the block okay which is over here it is sitting at the block okay the keel is sitting at the block okay and now you know that when the ship is heeled the buoyancy is going to shift to this point which is b1 okay and it is going to act upward which it is doing right okay okay now there is one more thing which you need to know is you know the p force the p force is acting in this direction like this okay right okay so what is happening here now let's see this okay so i am not going to go and tell you that b is going to cut at b1 and then you know b1 is going to act upward okay and it is going to cut somewhere here at the meta center right that is basic stuff which we have done okay you are supposed to know that and there is, then there is a g also from where a weight is acting downward as w okay now there are two forces which are acting upward and these forces are known as you know p force and the other is your w minus p why it is called w minus p why right it is called w minus p because of only one reason why because 
I told you that once the ship has taken uh, the uh, taken the blocks. Okay, what is happening is when the ship has taken the blocks. What is happening is at that moment, okay, there is some of the weight which is borne by the block also. Okay, right? There is some of the weight which is borne by the block also. Okay, so before that, when it was not sitting at the block, okay, the W was equal to the force of buoyancy, isn't it? But when it took the block, some of the weight has been taken by the block also. So that weight is equal to the upthrust force. So I have reduced the upthrust force from W. Okay, right? Now, the resultant shall act through the M1. Okay, so there is P, there is W minus P. There are two parallel forces. So resultant will be acting through a new point which is known as M1. Okay, and this is this point. Okay, this is your M1. This is your M1. Okay, over here. Okay, so now there is a resultant of P and W minus P. W minus P is what? It is a buoyancy force. Remember, it is a buoyancy force. Okay, this is a buoyancy which is acting in the upward direction. And this is what? This is your up thrust. Okay, so now there is a resultant which will again cut down, okay, at point M1. So, if the kg is constant, okay, so if the kg is constant, okay, the km will drop to a new position called km1 because of the decrease in buoyancy. Remember, because buoyancy is decreasing, so km is also going to decrease, okay, and then it is going to cut at a new point M1. And this M1 is what? This M1 is from where a new resultant uh, will uh, pass through. Okay? Understood or not? Right? Okay? Now, why there is a decrease in buoyancy? As we know, the upthrust force is created. And because the upthrust force is created, okay? Right? Because the upthrust force is created, this P is created because of transfers of buoyancy on the keel. Understood or not? Right? Okay? Now, let us go further ahead and see this. Okay? See this again. Okay? So, there are two parallel forces which are acting. Okay? Why they are acting? So, I know that this is the upthrust force. This is the upthrust force which is acting from the keel in the upward direction from the keel. Right? And this is, this is my P force, right? And there is a buoyancy also because the ship has healed. So it has also act upward, has to act upward. This is a buoyancy force. But this buoyancy is a reduced, reduced, uh, what do you call, by P factor. Why W minus P? Because there is some weight. So for example, you are, ship was, let me make it very, very simple. Your ship was of 100 tons. Right? Now, 100 tons, if I want to float this ship, I need a force of buoyancy which can equalize these 100 tons. So, I need a buoyancy okay, of those 100 tons. Right? Now, because now the ship is sitting on the keel, because the ship is sitting on the keel, now what is happening is, Right, the upthrust force will start acting. Say, if this upthrust force is, say, just giving an example, say it is 20 tons, okay, right, okay, it is 20 tons. So, this 20 tons weight of a ship is also borne by the block, right? So, now what is remaining is 100 minus 20, which is called as 80 tons. So now buoyancy only has to take care of that 80 tons, right? Because 20 tons is also, 20 tons is also weight, but it is borne by the block now. Usko block ne le liya. Understood or not? This is borne by the block. So that is why I'm 
राइटिंग है डब्ल्यू माइनस पी अंडरस्टूड और नॉट ओके राइट नाउ लेट्स गो फर्दर हेड ओके नाउ लुक एट दिस नाउ दिस डायग्राम इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाई देर इज अ वर्चुअल लॉस ऑफ डी एम सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट इफ वी हैव यू नो वट वट वी हैव इफ वी हैव लाइक से मोमेंटम विच इज क्रिएटेड बाय पी वाई द मूवमेंट इज क्रिएटेड वाई द मूवमेंट इज क्रिएटेड बाय पी बिकॉज पी इज right there is a force which is acting and it is separated by a distance also so momentum will be created that we know right so now the p is creating a momentum okay this p is going to create a momentum right and this momentum will be equal to moment created by the buoyancy also right or wrong okay so whatever movement is created by p will be equal to movement created by bonds understood or not now say for example if this is actually separated by a distance called x okay so this basically this distance is x and this distance is y understood or not so there is a distance x there is a distance y okay right now if i say this the moment created by p is equal to moment created by bonsi so i will say okay so this is p okay p multiplied by x so this is the force and this is the distance right and force into distance will gives me moment i know this right correct so i can write over here that w minus sorry p into x will give me a moment created by the upthrust force right at the same time i can also say that this wp which is a force over here and it is separated by this distance okay it is separated by this distance this distance y okay so i will say it is w minus p multiplied by y right or wrong now what is w minus p into y so i have to now calculate the y also okay now how to calculate the y now look easy and i can easily tell that this y which i want to calculate over here this y okay so this distance y okay from here to here this distance y okay is equal to this distance right over here and this triangle okay right okay right if i this triangle is right angle triangle if i find out this length this length is equal to this length right so that length over there is m m m m1 sin theta so y will be equal to m m1 sin theta and that is why i have written over here okay which is m m1 sin theta same thing goes for my x right how to find out x if you see this this length x is equal to what is equal to this length understood or not this right this x length over here is equal to this length and if that is theta okay i can say easily that that is k m One sine theta. If it is a right angle triangle, and if you apply Pythagoras theorem, understood or not? So I have find out this as well, right? Now I just have to say W minus P is equal to m m one P k m one. Why? Because sine theta and sine theta will get cancelled. Simple maths, okay? And then W m m one. Just open uh, this bracket is equal to 
पी एम एम वन इज इक्वल टू पी के एम वन राइट एंड नाउ वॉट आई डन इज डब्ल्यू एम एम वन आई टेकन इट टू द अदर साइड पी के एम वन प्लस एम एम वन ओके सो नाउ वॉट इज दिस के एम वन इफ यू नो दिस ओके जस्ट पे अटेंशन टू दिस नाउ योर के एम वन ओके सो के दिस इज माई कील यहां से लेकर यहां तक का डिस्टेंस इज के एम वन एंड देन एम एम वन इज दिस डिस्टेंस राइट सो इफ आई टूगेदर से दिस दिस इज इक्वल टू के एम राइट this full distance is equal to km understood or not so km1 and mm1 okay is going to give me km so i have written this is equal to okay km p into km now what is mm1 i can write it p into km divided by w understood or not now what is this mm1 okay if i say this mm1 is nothing but this is also known as the virtual loss of gm why because your gm gm was this much okay if i draw a line over here like just a parallel or let me draw it in the another color no i know over four right and there was a g over here okay so this was your gm initial gm was this much big right and now it has got reduced to a new length which is gm1 which is this much now understood or not so before that your gm was okay your gm was this much big and now it has got reduced to this only understood or not okay so this only so this loss of gm this is the loss this is the loss which i have actually and now i have reduced to this much gm only and this is what is known as a virtual loss of gm understood or not understood or not okay so now this is what i call it a virtual loss of gm right okay so what i have learned is that how the virtual loss of gm is affecting your ship the virtual loss of gm will affect your ship because if you will start with if you will start with the very less gm okay while coming inside a you have a virtual loss of gm okay you might develop a negative stability and the ship might develop a capsizing lever and your ship might get off the blocks and that is what is very very dangerous that is what is very very dangerous as far as you are concerned right so whenever you become a chief mate and you are having a dry docking okay please note that you should maintain a positive positive equilibrium a good gm understood or not because your original metacentric height which was gm which i showed you this and this length has got reduced so i told you right this was your original gm and now it has got reduced to this much right so that is very very important so that uh, loss of gm okay might uh, you know uh, might affect your stability of uh, the vessel at the dry dock so you should be careful okay understood i hope uh, you like uh, this video uh, thank you very much for paying attention if you want to know some other topics you can uh, just comment in the comment section and i'll come up uh, with a new video uh, regarding the same topic thanks a lot for paying attention again